Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod, a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about SpaceX's HLS mission to the moon, NASA's Orion spacecraft, and how things may completely change for the Artemis missions going forward. Now, originally, NASA wanted SpaceX to launch the lunar HLS Starship to moon orbit, where it would dock with the Orion spacecraft, and the HLS ship would take the astronauts down to the surface of the moon. Now, something drastic may be changing in the near future. There's been murmurings that behind closed doors, NASA is discussing a low Earth orbit transfer of astronauts between the Orion spacecraft and the Starship HLS. Now, these are unconfirmed right now. They haven't released anything about this yet, but Ars Technica posted an article about it, and Eric Berger is very reputable, and he was the one that posted this article. What may be happening with the Starship and the Orion? So let's just wind it in a little bit, because we have to understand what the process is of getting the HLS Starship to the moon first. Okay, so first they have to launch a fuel depot or a fuel fuel, a few fuel depots for the actual Starship to fuel up in low Earth orbit before it gets to the moon, before it launches to the moon. And NASA has said somewhere around 10-ish in SpaceX, Elon Musk said somewhere around 10 to 15 so we're going to go on the low side. We're going to say about 10 depots will be launched to low Earth orbit where the HLS Starship will dock with them and fuel up before it goes to the moon. Then the HLS will be fueled up and possibly in between the fuel and going to the moon, like that step right there, astronauts will fly on an SLS rocket to low Earth orbit and then dock with the Starship. Now. We're not sure if this is even feasible right now. We know that this is going to be a thing in the future, but there are some caveats to this that could make this a more impressive mission and also could save NASA billions of dollars in the future. You're asking yourself, why do they need the SLS rocket if it's not going all the way to the moon? That's what I'm asking myself too. If the Orion capsule could be retrofitted to be on top of a starship or on top of a dragon or Falcon 9 instead of a dragon capsule. That's a possibility. But you're also probably thinking, why don't they just use a dragon capsule and dock that with a starship? Because dragon capsules already go to low Earth orbit and they can dock with the International Space Station. So that seems like the logical next step, right? Not quite yet. So there will be a possible mission with the Orion spacecraft and the HLS Starship because they need to test this out to see if the Orion can actually dock with the Starship while in space, because that's what they're going to be doing in the moon's orbit. And the Dragon capsule cannot go to the moon and dock with the Starship and come back to Earth. It just isn't feasible. It doesn't work like that. The physics don't work. The Dragon capsule is not built for that. So they need to use the Orion capsule or some other capsule that could be created in the future for docking with the Starship and then coming back to Earth. So once the astronauts are on board the Starship, then three or more astronauts would fly their way to the moon's orbit where they would land on the moon's surface. And then when they're done with their science and experimentation on the lunar surface, they would fly back up and dock with the Orion capsule or the moon station, transfer the astronauts again. And then from the Orion, they would come back down to Earth. The HLS rocket would stay either in the lunar orbit or docked with the moon station until the next mission. And possibly just land on the moon and wait for another HLS rocket to come up because there is a limited shelf life for these things while they're in space and orbiting the moon. So could land it on the moon and it could become a habitat for future astronauts. Now, the good thing about going to the moon in the HLS is that you're not cramped like the Orion spacecraft. The Orion spacecraft, even though it is a modern marvel of engineering, 
there's not a lot of room. You can't really move around a lot. You can't really do much. And you can't really stretch a lot. There's no food, there's no room for activities there. With the HLS Starship, it's nine meters round, 30 feet around. It's a massive ship. And if they can construct this so the astronauts could just fly all the way to the moon on the HLS rocket, it seems like it's totally doable. Then they could land the Starship with the astronauts on board. And it would be a much better experience for the astronauts. Um, they could have more experimentation time because the HLS rocket could have more room for experiments. And so low Earth orbit experimentation while they're waiting, or they could do experimentation all the way to the moon and while they get to the moon, while they orbit the moon and when they land on the moon. So the experimentation time and the experimentation mass of experimentation could be much bigger than just going in the Orion space capsule because it seems, I don't know, it seems like this is a win-win. We've been talking about this for a long time. I know a lot of space reporters were like, why do we need Orion when Starship's going to low Earth orbit anyway? And they're going to dock with Starship and then go? Didn't make a lot of sense. So we've been talking about this for a long time, but since there's murmurings within NASA now about this happening, it's this totally a possibility. They're going to need to launch a few, SL, few more SLS rockets before they change completely over to the Starship. Because Starship can do everything that SLS can and possibly even more. It's, it looks like a bright future for H HLS Starship. Now, the first mission that these astronauts may do, because they can't go into the Starship immediately, then fly to the moon. They, this, they need to test this thing out. So the Polaris program was going to test a docking from a dragon into a Starship and do some low Earth orbit experimentation and check out to see if the starship is feasible for low earth orbit or moon travel. And that was going to be the initial docking and testing phase. So there's a possibility that the Orion could, or maybe even a dragon could do this, dock with the HLS, two astronauts would transfer into the HLS starship, um, while two others would stay inside the dragon capsule and do testing from there from a distance they could do maneuvering they could do some burns they could do orientations they could possibly even do an eva which doesn't make a lot of sense from a starship standpoint but it might be something they do in the future just for testing then they could redock with the dragon capsule and then come back down to earth so they have to test the starship out before they get it to the moon so the hls starship is that might be the first test of this series of tests. And then that HLS Starship could fly to the moon and do a test landing on the lunar surface just to make sure that there's no astronauts on board in case something bad happens. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about this because it seems like a logical step forward. Like why would they even use the Orion capsule in low Earth orbit to test this when they have a Dragon capsule? But they do need the Orion capsule to go to the moon and come back down to Earth. So I could totally get that. I totally get that part. But everything else seems very logical. Dock in Earth orbit and make sure that everything's okay with the Starship and command a gigantic spaceship between the Earth and the moon. That sounds like a no-brainer to me. 150 to 200 feet long Starship. It's a massive ship. Can do all sorts of sciencing, all sorts of engineering on your way to the moon and in low Earth orbit while you wait and then head to the moon. Sounds, sounds great to me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, does this make the SLS rocket unsustainable for the billions and billions of dollars per launch that it costs? I think it does. I think it does. Because if the Orion spacecraft only has to go to low Earth orbit, they could launch it from another rocket, whether it's a ULA rocket, what it, whatever, it could be a star or it could be another SpaceX rocket. Who knows? I'm not sure exactly what the configuration would be, but the SLS rocket is a jobs program. It makes America a bunch of money. And these people are spread across the whole nation, making and designing, building, engineering, all of these parts to build this massive SLS rocket. So the SLS rocket is a jobs program as well. So they would lose tax money and they would lose funding 
if they get rid of the SLS rocket. So I don't think they're going to get rid of the SLS rocket. They may use it for deep space exploration or something like that in the future and just shift over to Starship and SpaceX for the time being for the moon launches. And maybe SLS will be more Mars and further out into the solar system in the future. But we know that Starship will be capable in the future of going to Mars as well. So there's really no reason to use SLS anymore, if this is true, other than super far out space, like science missions. I don't know. I really don't know. I, it's a massive rocket and Starship can do everything that SLS can do and then more. So I think this might be the end of the SLS program. This might be the beginning of the end of the SLS program. Let me just put it that way. All right. So that's all I got for now. Let me know in the comments what you think. Of course, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button, because if you hit the like button and the subscribe button, YouTube will see that you like space flight content and that you like Starship content and SpaceX content. And they're going to show you more of that stuff in your feed. And then you'll get different creators from all spectrums and you will learn so much about Starship and SpaceX that it's going to be ridiculous. So please hit the subscribe button. We're heading up to 100,000 subscribers. So we're almost there. So be part of the pod squad and hit the sub button. Thanks again, everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one.